My great Kyokai Senki is finally here and this is absolutely awesome, I am blown away. This was so close to getting platinum tier but it did lose some points because of the color accuracy of this particular kit. This is a real robot, it's bulky, mechanical, feels like a robot. And it does have full 3mm compatibility on all of its hard points so you can attach some Gompla and other kits related parts. Anyway, let's check it out. Hey what is up everyone, today I'm taking a look at the high grade Melis Byakuchi. As usual this video right here would not be possible without those absolutely phenomenal people over at Hobby Link Japan so if you do want some Kyokai Senki kits of your own I will throw a link down there in the description. But keep in mind as kits by Bandai and other Gunpla related kits etc are a little bit in short supply at the moment make sure to get your pre-orders in and get them in early anyway. Let's get right into it. So jumping right into the review with the overview of everything that comes in the box once you've put it all together. First off that is the high grade Byakuchi itself, we've got some armaments including the backpack mounted missile launcher, the 60mm portable auto cannon. we've got 3 alternate hands as well as the widespread open ones already attached onto Byakuchi, and we do have some stickers in here which might have caught your eye straight away. The first of which are some decals which are cool and the second of which are these color correcting stickers. With a, you know that's a little bit of an issue so we might as well wind it back a little bit and talk about the build first. So starting right off of the box and this is a pretty cool looking box right here. The Art on it is master grade level without a doubt and everything's laid out pretty nicely. We get a bunch of information on the Byakuchi mecha itself, all the different weaponry and different aspects of the kit as well as some interesting looking articulation, definitely a unique kit right here. On the side of the box we've got some information on the pilot of this particular unit as well as about Kyokai Senki Frost Flower which is the manga this particular mecha is from. Inside the box there is a decent amount of plastic, the parts are very large I'll mention and also you can see that the color separation is quite good besides the fact that we are lacking a lot of yellow plastic. So I do have to mention at this point this is probably the fastest I've ever torn a kit out of the box and put it together in a long long time. Inside this box there is a lot of nice things to see. We've got 10 runners, a lot of colors in here which at first makes you think this is a super color accurate kit but it is lacking a lot of colors I will mention soon. We have 10 runners in total, there's nothing too difficult to put together in here. The head does have a couple of small parts but not too much. This kit retails for around 2600 yen so the price point is about right for this amount of plastic. Especially considering the finished model is a decent bit bigger than a standard high grade. On building this kit I did the usual, 2 snips off the runner with the god hand and I did do a little bit extra. I used Bandai's pore type pen liners, mainly in grey on all of the white. I did it on the runners, cleaned it off on the runners, had it ready to go by the time I was snipping out. I will also mention that I wasn't going to use any of the stickers or paint any parts on this until I noticed that some of the parts were quite deep in, like some of the parts in the chest. So I did decide I didn't want to be tearing it apart later in order to paint these so I just grabbed a gold Gundam marker to paint those segments inside of the chest in gold. This is a good marker by the way. I will also mention that when I finished this I did reach for a blue and a yellow Gundam marker because I did want to add in some of the color. Now these are not perfect when it comes to matching the colors on this kit. I just went for what I had and if you want these particular Gundam markers any of the ones I just talked about I will also throw the links to those in the description. But yeah when it came to the build of this I cut every single part out and I could fit them all on an A3 cutting mat so there isn't too much in here and the pieces are quite sizable. I expected the build on this to be somewhat similar to an Iron Blooded Orphans kit, maybe even kind of like a Nightmare Frame from Code Geass at the same time, like a mix between the two but this is a whole different beast entirely. It's big, bulky, clunky, feels really strong and for the most part the build is spectacular besides one Achilles heel, or should I say Achilles crotch, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. So moving on to the aesthetics and jumping right on into that full 360 spin and as usual I'm going to stick the art up on the right hand side, mainly this time so you can see where the color inaccuracies are. I will mention I painted the knees on this and the gold inside of the chest, besides that this is what you get out of the box besides the panel lines too. So yeah it is missing a lot of colors especially the yellow and the gold in the chest which is a bit of a letdown. I will mention though that the series protagonist and yes I'm referring to the mecha as the protagonist because to me it is. 
Uh, Kembu, that looks like it has a more simplistic color scheme and may not rely so much on stickers. This is a manga design, so I guess it is a little bit more, well, detailed. So there's so much to say about this, and the first thing I'll say is, I did throw a couple of poses in the spins this time, mainly because I just wanted to give you a better idea of, well, the looks from different angles. This has a crazy awesome, well, the engineering on it is just awesome, and as far as I know, I can't seem to see it in the instructions anywhere, but Ken Okuyama Design, as in Ken Okuyama, guy renowned for designing cars, etc., well, his company were involved in the design of these mecha and it shows these feel like actual real robots it's got a low center of gravity so it really stands up quite well the feet disperse the weight really well and the whole thing just makes sense the reverse jointed limbs everything it just is a robot from a functional perspective it's like a tank on legs not necessarily a big glamorous beautiful robot like a gundam is before these came out, I was definitely interested, and after building it, I've fallen head over heels in love with these. I cannot wait to see what's coming out. We've got loads of stuff coming. We've got the Kembu, we've got the other miscellaneous Amimes. I think it's Amimes. It's A-M-A-I-M, -A -A Auto Mobile Artificial Intelligence Mount, that is the robot here. But there is no katakana for how Amime, or a M A I M is pronounced. I'm going to stick with Mecha for the rest of the video. But yeah, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It's mainly big blocky parts in the body that look really cool robot like. But yeah, it's mainly big blocky parts in the body and tiny small parts for the detail on the head, which is a nice distribution of parts, honestly. Anyway, let's get in a bit closer and check out what there is to see. So the first thing I noticed about this that there isn't really much to do with on this kit is the fact that there are 3mm hard points everywhere, up in the shoulders, on the hips, on the back of the arms. The only thing we have to use with these as of right now is the shield, so I expect to see a lot of cool accessories for these in the future. Like I mentioned, this is a very sticker heavy kit and I did not use any of them at all. I just painted a couple of details. That is the knees and inside the chest, that is all. So the eyes on this are clear parts and it seems to be a sort of visor more than anything else. But yeah, the amount of part separation on the head is great. All the yellow parts on the head, those are plastic parts. The sticker style decals we have in here are just like I said, sticker style decals. That means they are just stickers, which is kind of self-explanatory, but what I mean is, there is a very visible line around the outside of them if you do not basically painstakingly cut them out yourself. So this is more noticeable on the shield than it is on the one up on the white section on the shoulder. And maybe, and it is kind of usual of Bandai, they might release some water slides in future. So you might want to hold off on using them if you don't particularly like stickers. But yeah, I have absolutely fallen in love with the design of this. There's some cool elements I just love. The feet are ridiculously awesome. These seem so functional compared to Gundam feet. The legs are big, reverse jointed, clunky and cool. And you can actually see through the central aspect here, which just makes sense again. Cut away excess mass that you don't need. Keep the weight down. But yeah, when I posted a picture of this on the community tab, one of the biggest questions you guys asked me is, what is the compatibility with Gunpla? And I assume you mean other kits too. So before I actually do that, let's check out the size comparisons with some Gunpla and other kits and then get into the compatibility. So anyway, right into the size comparisons with the high grade RX-78 too. So as you can see, it is a good head and shoulders taller than your standard 144th scale Gundam. Now at this point I will mention something that I haven't really mentioned so far throughout this review. This is not to scale with Gunpla. Well, high grade or master grade, this is 172nd scale or 172 scale, whatever way you like to say it. Which means, scale wise, this is double the size a high grade would be, if you get what I mean. AKA, this in reality, if it was side by side with a Gundam, would be half the size of it. So yeah, not to scale with Gunpla. So anyway, next up there is a master grade Gunpla, so it isn't quite that big, so it's more close to a high grade Gunpla more than anything else, especially technically. You know what it's saying, high grade in the box and all. I don't know why inside my head I thought these were 172nd scale too, so I did dig this out from inside of the dungeon, and when I saw it said 160th scale on the box, I wasn't going to add it to the video, but I have it out now, why not? This is a high grade 160th scale full metal panic kit, also by Bandai. So anyway, doing a bit of a round of the shelves, and first up there it is on the Amaro shelf, and zooming out a little bit more, you can see that this doesn't have the craziest shelf presence around, but then again, how could you in that absolute clutter? I need to deal with that. 
Next up there it is besides some Gundam Build Divers and Gundam Build Divers Re-Rising kits, besides some main high-grade Gundams from different Gundam universes, and there it is next to some Universal Century kits from big to small, all 144th scale. There's the Byakuchi on the catapult deck of the Argama, and seeing as I was right beside them, there it is side by side with the real grade Sazabi, which is a monster, and there it is side by side with the real grade new Gundam. So yeah, let's check out the compatibility. So now talking about the compatibility of the Byakuchi right here, and I have to say that it is quite a bit different than your standard high grade. So there is no polycaps at all in this build, so it has not reused any standard high grade polycaps. So for the most part, you won't be able to use this with a high grade. Also, what we've got inside the joints here is what looks like a four millimeter peg up top. Don't quote me on that and a 5 down below, so it means it is different to something like a 30 minute mission. I'll also mention another couple of aspects, like this right here, which I refer to this kit's Achilles crotch, because this just splits every time you turn the leg. So anytime you turn this part up here, that seam splits, which is really annoying. You have to disassemble the whole upper leg in order to put that back together, so I suggest gluing that seam. It will save you a lot of issues. Also, I've never mentioned the arm on this. The arms are so cool. There is no elbow, it is just a series of parts, and if you pop these out, these aspects are your standard 3mm pegs. That means we might be seeing some interesting combinations in this line, potentially using these. So, yeah, this is such an interesting design. I would assume a robot would have something like this in actual reality than, well, something based on the human elbow. So yeah, if you take a standard kit like the High Grade Oryx 78 2 here, this has the standard issue High Grade Everything, which is the shoulder ball joint like that, which will not work with this kit, and the standard hip, which is a 3mm peg. So yeah, most Bandai kits will not be out of box compatible with this kit, especially High Grade Gunpla, so it may be on a case by case basis, whether the shoulders or the hips will fit on anything else, sadly. Now it's time to put this guy back together and take a look at the accessories. So anyway, jumping right on back to the begin the review, and there is the Byakuchi with absolutely everything that it comes with. Now let's check everything out one by one. So first off, as for the default set of hands we have in here, that is these widespread open ones. The sculpt is extremely nice, but just like with the rest of the kit, there is a little bit of a color accuracy issue. Kind of like with the Gundam Astray, the individual finger parts are meant to be in white, like this image right here. And I will mention this does kind of come up very, very soon in another kind of negative aspect. We'll get to that now. And that is the included hand we have in here for using with the rifle or the autocannon, I should say. That is half in full white and half in gray, which is a little bit on the odd side. I haven't seen something like this in a long, long time. So, so out of box, this does look a little bit on the odd side, but this, strangely enough, is more color accurate than the standard hands we we're just looking at because all you'd have to color in is those knuckles in gray and the tip of the index finger, but the ends of the fingers there, those are meant to be in gray, so I guess it's not the worst, just strange. So the next pair of hands we have in here are a pair of holding hands. Now, once again, Bandai has done something that it does quite a bit while being a bit on the cheap side, and that is they did not include any backs for these hands, which I guess doesn't matter because this kit doesn't include anything to hold. But anyway, let's continue. Swapping out these hands is super simple. These are your standard ball joint wrists. You just pop those out and pop them back in again like so. These, however, are compatible with high-grade Gumpla. So the first up of the equipment that we have in here is the 60mm portable autocannon with the drum magazine. According to the instructions, this is a portable heavy firearm, a rapid fire 60mm combustible cartridge case ammunition, and can penetrate the armor of almost all modern weapons, including all types of AMAIMs used by each force. It adopts a drum type magazine, resulting in more weight compared to normal cannons of the same type, but is capable of carrying more ammunition. Attaching this is quite simple, it's the old sandwich hand, except there's a little bit of a difference. The fingers in the front are actually the smaller, flat kind of part, not the back of the hand like we usually see with Gumpla. Once it is attached, this is held in rock solidly in one of the coolest ways ever. The stock at the back of the autocannon fits flush in behind the front segment of the arm. This is really cool, it never gets in the way no matter what way that it's being held. 
On top of that, the drum magazine that this has is removable, which is always an awesome feature. And overall, this just looks so cool. I love the way it looks just like an actual firearm, scaled up to mecha size. I love it. Physical weapons all the way. So the next piece of equipment we have in here is the shield. This is incredibly simple. It is just one piece of plastic. If you flip it around to the other side, it's just a peg sticking out, nothing really else. Hey, it's a shield. What does it need to be but a sheet of metal? Attaching that is simple. You can attach it into any three millimeter hole on this particular kit, like up here on the shoulder. You could stick it on the sides of the thighs if you wanted, but the place it's meant to go is on the rear of the arm like this for defending against incoming enemy fire. So the last piece of equipment we have in here is the backpack. Now this is mounted with the four tube portable guided missile launcher. This attaches onto the backpack with two slots nice and firmly. Doesn't feel like it's gonna fall off. And I will mention about the missile launcher right here. I did paint the blue section on it with a Gundam marker. Once again, doesn't truly match the paint on this kit. And if you do want the Gundam marker pack, I'll drop a link in the description. This is attached via this arm with multiple points of articulation, which allows it to move up and over the shoulder. I will mention there is no side to side pivot on this, just cycling up from the back round to the front. That is all. And it's probably more than enough. On the other side, we do have a very similar looking arm and this is pretty cool. This is for mounting the auto cannon onto when it is not in use, so it can be stored round back. And if you are curious and asking the important questions, yes, that can be swung forward to where the hand would be able to grab it. So you can pose it in an about to reach for the autocannon kind of pose. That is cool, I love it. When things that are meant to function in a certain way actually function in the way they're meant to. So jumping now into the articulation and the build quality of this is ridiculous. It is as solid as a rock, no loose nothing anywhere. Besides the fact that the inner thighs, ignore that. Besides the fact that the inner thighs can split when you move them, which is probably the biggest issue with this kit. Again, glue or cement that segment. Otherwise, this is rock solid. First up in the neck, we've got that full giggity 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 goo, and there's a lot of joints in here. We've got a couple up near the head, which allows a lot of down, up, side to side, and a little bit of wiggle inside of that as well. The lower joint gives us some side to side and forward and back on top of that, so the full range of motion in the neck is incredible. I thought it would be limited, it is not, and you will get absolutely everything you need from this joint. This kit right here has an incredible shoulder joint with great strength. First up, we have a flappy flap up top, which can move the armor out of the way of raising the arm up and down. This can raise up and down at two points, that is inside the torso at the shoulder, as well as inside the shoulder itself. So the shoulder whole segment is double jointed for the up and down lift. The next aspect is really, really cool. So the reason I haven't moved this arm too much during the review is because I have painted this little segment in here. When you move the arm forward and back, this whole mechanism in here does move too, like a big old piston. That is cool. And when you move that, you get even more out of the arm. On top of that, then we've got the full 360 degree spin. So what's going on in here will give you a multitude of poses. If you want to reach the arm all the way up, you will have to rotate it all the way around like so, but still looking awesome. Moving down to the arm now, and first up we've got the full rotation at the upper arm, that's full 360. Moving down a little bit more and we've got what is, I guess, the elbow. Now this is just a rotating peg, but it gives you quite a bit. There it is all the way to the front and back, and quite impressive. So we've got another one of these rotating peg segments down here at the lower forearm. Now this has a great range of motion. Yes, the hand flew off again, this is easy to knock off, but we do get a lot of movement and you can fold this in. I do remember in the trailer of Kyokai Senki, we saw Kenbu fold up essentially into a box. So I assume these mecha can do just that. Lastly then, the wrist is your standard ball and socket. So you think the setup of joints in the arm like this would limit the overall articulation, but that is not the case. I'm assuming this is based on actual current robotics, as in not humanoid joints, but robotic joints. I got everything I ever wanted out of this pose-wise, no issues. This is pretty cool. Moving down to the ab crunch now, and this is insane. First off, we've got rotation up here just above the midsection of this robot. That gives us quite a bit, and then we have the actual ab crunch inside of the midsection, giving us forward and back. 
And below that again, we've got a ball joint. So the combination of movements on this is incredible. Once again, this seems a lot more robotic than you'd see usually with a Gundam style mecha. Those are more based on humans. This is an outright robot and I love that. You can get so much out of this. As for the butt flap on this kit, it's two hinges so it can actually move up and down quite a bit. Really cool. Next up inside of the hip, this is just a standard hip peg. There is no mechanism to raise or lower this. Not that you need it in this kind of mecha. But on the other side of this joint, inside the upper leg, this is a bit of a nightmare. Once again, glue or cement this, you have to or it will drive you mad. It separates like this all the time. And if it does, you need to either disassemble the leg to push it together, or do what I do and jam something in there to push it back together. Once again, because this is not based on a humanoid design, this leg can spin the full 360. You can get whatever you want out of it. As for the splits, they can go all the way up, but because, once again, this has no limitations, just flip the leg and you can bring the leg all the way up. This is off the wall. This is, this is a real mecha right here. Not just some glorified big human. As for the rotation at the upper leg, it's pretty good. You get pretty much all you would ever need. It spins all the way to one side, then blocked by the armor and all the way back. And just to kind of make my point almost moot, this segment in here did not separate this time around, but I still recommend cementing that. So detaching the legs so you can see everything going on here, because this is a unique leg. There is the upper knee articulation, so it is a little bit limited up here. When we move down to the lower segment, this has a much wider range of motion. Moving down then to the foot, and there's a lot going on here. You can move the front toes only down and up like so. They can be moved independently. We do have a bit of a hollow segment on the inside of both, sadly. These can also rotate. The back one can rotate, so you can pivot the foot by rotating these segments. We do not have any forward and back pivot at the ankle, sadly, so you can't lean it forward or back, but we do have a mild little bit of rotation. So just to give an example of what these are like on there, it is crouched all the way down, and there is the legs all the way extended, so these are pretty nice. So yeah, I love the articulation on this. I love how it's not humanoid. This is some real mechanical robot stuff right here. It's so fun to pose. I can get anything and everything I want out of it. It's really dynamic, and it's so unique. I adore these kits. I love it. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And when it comes to a new line, it is hard to rank them. So I'm going to leave it till the end of this rambling right here to decide what tier this gets. But I am beyond impressed. This is so much better than I thought it would be. So just going through the checklist, visually, this is fantastic. It does drop the ball quite a bit when it comes to the color accuracy, definitely bringing down the score a bit. The amount of stickers in here is a letdown. However, I do believe that the Kembu will have less stickers because of the more simplified color scheme. Talking about the accessories in here, and they're very, very nice. We've got the big auto cannon, we've got the missile launcher and the shield, a nice little loadout. There is no physical melee style weapons in here, but I guess that is for the Kembu as well. I expect to see some add-on kits for these in the future, considering the amount of hard points on this, so that is definitely a good thing. When it comes to the articulation and the build on this, this is where I'm the most impressed. The upper thigh is a little annoying, but you can fix that so simply with a bit of cement. Besides that, this is so impressive. The engineering here is more than I was expecting, and I was expecting a lot considering Ken Okuyama. Design was involved. This is such a joy to pose, such a joy to look at, and it's such a robot. And that is what I adore about it. So, I am going to give this, when it comes to high grade in general, this is gold tier. And it just does not get platinum because of the color issues with it. If you don't give a crap about color because you're gonna paint it, then it is platinum. And I'm wondering, will that Kembu get that platinum? I'm wondering, I cannot wait for it to come out. That is out sometime next month, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. If you want some Kyokai Senki kits of your own, link down there in the description and get them. Get them because they are awesome. Anyway, as always, I will see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos, including those of you who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Van Fon, Sean T, Mr. Winter, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kuglock, Global Frequency Studios, Forseti, Caleb Engelhart, and Bakito Official. Ah, oh, you fucker. There, there it happened. Ah, oh, you busted. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. Cement it.